name is Jose Ronstadt and uh, we're in Tucson, Arizona at the 36th Annual Tucson International Mariachi Conference. Well, this is, uh, the, the, I've been with this conference, you know, uh, 34 out of the uh, 36 years I hosted the conference. I used to be on the board and I've been DMC for the, all these years. Uh, for, for the, this is kind of the conference where everything grew out, even though San Antonio was the first one to have some kind of a of a mariachi competition, but it's really the, the Tucson International Mariachi Conference, the one that kind of serves as the platform for many other uh, conferences, including the same educational model like we saw in Las Cruces and like we've seen in other, in, in other parts. Um, it, it, it's changed in, in terms of how the economy has changed. It's changed in terms of like this is being, this year is being hosted at a casino. Uh, casinos, I think, have impacted a lot on the, uh, on, on the conferences and the way that, that they're going. Because at one time this used to be like an event, but 65% of the people of the audience that we got, we got from California. We used to do two shows and uh, almost four or five days of festivities. But that changed and as the economy changed and as the casino started coming in with free entertainment, I think that has impacted. What hasn't changed is the uh, commitment like the Tucson International Mariachi Conference to keep up with the educational component an educational component that that includes dance and, and music from beginners to, uh, to master's level. That hasn't changed. This particular year in the 36th annual, we're gonna have a, an opportunity to see Pepe Martinez Jr. and his Mariachi Angeles. And uh, Pepe left after 26, 27 years, I think left Vargas, being the face of Mariachi Vargas. Uh, and he's formed this new Mariachi Ensemble, which is really, really good. Uh, we actually, they actually had their debut and uh, we did a reenactment. Uh, we paid tribute to uh, 30 years of Canciones de Mi Padre at the Fourth Theater. Uh, and Pepe and Susie were an integral part of it. Uh, my daughter Marisa Ronstadt is the one that headlined the, the uh, Canciones uh, tribute. And I mean, we did like everything. We, we found some of the old crew members uh, that were in the audience. Uh, a lot of, you know, a couple of them were crying because they had to, you know, all these memories coming to them in, in 30 years. Uh, Marisa's here to, uh, also with Angeles for, the, for this particular event. So you see, the, you know, different ensembles now coming up. You see different artists. In, in the old traditional way of uh, uh, music, I think the only iconic figure that still remains from that line of Lola Beltran and Lucha Villa is uh, probably, uh, probably Aida Cuevas. You know, we have not seen that. Uh, we have not seen a continuity in that. Uh, we, we see it here, you know, in, in, in performers like Marisa, and we see it in Mariachi Angeles, but uh, it's changed. But what hasn't changed, I think, is, is you look what's going on throughout the nation. You see more and more educational mariachi components in different schools. Clark Unified School District in Vegas, you know, has done an outstanding job. Some of those kids are here. Uh, they take classes in different places. In, uh, in Los Angeles, it's, it's, it's a different phenomenon. Even though it's, it should be the place to have all these educational components, it just doesn't happen. Uh, Susie Garcia has done a, an old girls academy where she picks you know, uh, uh, girls from different schools that want to perform mariachi music, but they don't have a mariachi program. And, uh, and they get an opportunity to also participate in a, an actual show, like with Canciones de Mi Padre, and like uh, what's coming up, uh, in September, a tribute to uh, Pepe Martinez. Uh, those girls get to participate. Uh, I think sponsorships have, you know, have changed. You, you know, we don't see the, we don't see the sponsorships that we that we used to see a lot. I think a lot of it has to do in like in here with the emergence of, of uh, the casinos, and uh, and the audiences still continue to be mostly Mexican American audiences because they are the ones. You know, we go back 36 years. It's been the Mexican American community is the ones that kind of maintain, palpitating the, the music of Maria. Yeah, it's you know a lot of these conferences are run by you know by volunteers and, and you know as board of directors. Uh, I think they all have really good intentions, but one thing is to understand you know the the artistic value of a, of a presentation, and the other one is just to you know set policy or raise funds and you know that type of thing. It's a tough business, but it's just like it's tough for any conference to uh, to survive. You know, it's uh, I think the association with the casino here was you know mostly needed uh, because of all the competition in order to maintain it, you know, maintain it alive.
uh, I, I would be the last person to give any, any concessions to any, any board because every board is different. You know, I just think that there's, they have to somehow kind of respect the, the art side of, uh, of what they're doing. You know, I understand the fundraising part. I understand the community involvement part. And, uh, but artistically, you know, you have to, you have to put on a show that, that, that also underlines the dignity of our music. Any closing thoughts? Anything that you'd like to share that maybe I didn't ask? Uh, no, I mean, I just, uh, I just hope uh, you know whatever you're doing, whatever, anything that helps to perpetuate our music and keep it going and influence and kids and, and also bringing people that perhaps don't understand it or do not know this is going on. I think it, I think it helps. So, so I'm grateful for that. Oh, I'm grateful for your sharing.